Hey everyone, welcome to the Someone Who Crafts podcast. This is episode number two. My name is Tegan, aka Someone Who Crafts, and let's get right into my finished objects. Before we get into the finished objects, my first question for everyone is, um, what are you working on? Uh, leave it in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. Um, as I don't have many uh, fiber arts friends that are close to me, I have two or three maybe, and they're not, they're kind of uh, not as like obviously invested as I am, but um, yeah, I would love some people who are obsessed with fiber arts to talk to because that would be very nice. Um, and let's talk about finished objects. So my first finished object is these granny square skull fingerless gloves they fit on the hand like this so your thumb goes through there and your hands come through the top and that's the ribbing for the wrist part and i just made two of the same great oh four actually but four um skull granny squares i might have shown them in my last episode but um if i didn't it's what they look like um, I was going to make a blanket out of the granny square skulls, but I thought that's a lot of work for a blanket and I already have heaps of other finished objects on the way and oh, not fin finished objects, sorry, current whips at the moment and also to do a, f a whole blanket with just um, skull granny squares would be a lot of work and I'm not that invested in that project anyway, so I wouldn't be invested in that, so I'm not interested in doing that right now, so that was turned into fingerless gloves, um, what I had for the blanket, which was five, but I gave one as a coaster to my mum, and the other four were turned into the fingerless mitts, or gloves. Um, onto the next finished object is this wall hanging. You can go back a bit, there we go. It's got a little cord on it, so it's the alpha wall hanging by um, Tony Lipsy. It's in her um, Tunisian Crochet Beginner's Guidebook. So the back is a Tunisian Crochet panel that I worked uh, 33 chains across and just as uh, the Tunisian Crochet Simple Stitch. And then I cross stitched the A into the front. Here's the back of my cross stitch. I don't know if that's supposed to be... Well, here's where I started because you can tell the little messy dangly bit. But um, I think it looks pretty good. I also made the pom-poms and the fringe um, and this was a dowel I got from Bunnings and just cut down to size and um, sewed through the background around the dowel to make it adhere to the dowel to be able to hang. So that is for my mum, letter A for Audrey as her first name. Um, so that's for her to hang in her office because she has an office job. I uh, just want to point out this stain here is gesso from when I used to paint, not nothing nefarious. Um, yeah, so that's all I have completed for finished objects. As I posted the last episode of this podcast, or episode one, two weeks ago, um, that's all I've managed to complete in this time. Um, sorry for saying I'm a lot, but I'm just going off the fly. I don't really have a script. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so... I only have two finished objects, so that's all I could manage in the two-week time. I did start um, this bucket hat. Here's the top of it, the bucket hat, a little stitch marker to hold my place. But I had already made a bucket hat technically twice before. That's the top. Because I made a follow to a YouTube video, which I'll tag in the description, um, for how to make it. I made the large according to the pattern on the YouTube tutorial and it was too big so then I turned it into a medium I frogged it back I made it all the way down to the actual head part and I frogged it back and then redid the top to the medium size and then continued to make it and finished it well that was also too big by about that much on the side of my head uh, as I have no hair that was I forgot to take that into account so the girl in the video had um obviously long hair so that takes up room so I ended up making starting the small size but as you can see I didn't finish it because 
this was the third time making the same project technically and I got sick of it. Basically I was working on it and I was like I'm forcing myself to work on this and that wasn't bringing me any joy really. So I'm like I didn't really want to work on this as it was the th third time I just said I'm repeating myself sorry about that. Um, yeah and it wasn't bringing me joy so basically what I'm trying to get at is don't work on projects that don't bring you joy. If you're having to force yourself to really work on it and like you're, you're in your mind, you're like, oh, do I have to work on it? Oh, I probably should because I need to finish it. That's probably not a good reason to work on a project. Um, if you're looking, you should be looking forward to working on your things. Um, or at least I think you should be looking forward to working on your things. Um, and yeah, so I thought, why force myself to work on it when I can just put on ice and maybe come back to it in a couple months or so. So, yeah. All right, now we're on to current whips. So, where should I start? Because I have a few. Um, actually, no, where to start? The, I'll just open my tub real quick. I've got a lot of stuff around me, so just excuse me for a minute. So the first um, whip I'm going to talk about is these granny squares. So they are the this yarn, the Semco yarn. It's the Stallion Fashion 8-ply yarn. It's 100% acrylic. Um, the colour is fluoro yellow. I don't think you can get this colour anymore because it was a limited time thing. Um, and they don't. I don't think they have it in stock anymore at Spotlight. So sorry about that. But um, I grabbed... A project's worth when that was available and there's my granny square I am following the solid granny square by Bella Coco I'll leave the video tutorial down in the description um, and I'm just bordering the square in uh, black yarn which is the same brand yarn as the so this yarn it's just in black I'm bordering it in that so I am oh, what I'm making is a cardigan so I need so this, with this size, um, I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook and I'm doing four rounds. Um, I am going to, my plan for this is um, use these because I made quite a few. I've made, I don't have my book on me. I think I've made about, at least over 50 um like 55 or something like that or um anyway um so I'm going to make the sleeves first because it's probably not a good idea to do it this way but this time I'm doing it the ones I've already got are quite small and so I was thinking to myself when I was planning this project um or when I had time to think about it when I came back to it was because this was on hold for quite a while because this was one of the first projects I actually started when I started crocheting so this project was on hold for a while due to one I stopped crocheting for seven months after I learned how to crochet but just because uh life work that sort of thing got in the way um so now that I've come back to it finally because it was on my list and it was my, I do my list in order of um what appears next so this I had to go down the line basically and or down the list and this was happens to me next so um yeah, I'm going to use these for the sleeves because they're quite small. Um, and I thought instead of making enough of these for a whole entire cardigan's worth, because it's going to be quite oversized because I like my clothes oversized. Um, instead of making a whole cardigan's worth this small, I'm going to use the small ones I already have for the sleeves. So I need to make, I only have enough at the moment for one sleeve. So I need to make a whole another sleeve out of these small ones and then I'm going to make probably because these have four rounds I'll probably do ones with maybe six or seven rounds to make the body the back and the front um, part of the cardigan so that's my plan for that now on to whip number two is my pink and blue patchwork cardigan I call it so this is what the patch looks like so I'm Basically using this yarn here, the Marvel printed yarn by Four Seasons. It's 100% acrylic, 100 grams. Um, as you can see, it's the pink and blue variegation. So it changes colour on its own, basically, what that means, if you don't know. Um, 
so as you can see as I go through I'm doing a half double crochet for this um, I'm doing about 24 25 rows and 30 stitches across um, and then I'm bordering it in black the same yarn the Marvel four seasons black plain black yarn and then that'll be sewn together with the black yarn as well to make the cardigan that I'm making with this so as I when I uh, started making this these patches I think I have a good pile I, I'll show you the pile so I have that many I've made so far so it's So that's 13 I've got. Um, so yeah, so as you can see, they're quite large. Um, I did start making these when I didn't really understand because when you do, if you don't know, um, when you do half double crochet, which is the US term, or I think it's half treble in the U UK terms, um, you when you make it to the end of the row, you basically have to, from the previous row, you have to make one half double crochet into the uh, previous row's chain stitch where you turned um, and I didn't really understand when I first started this when I first began make crocheting I didn't really understand where she was where Bella Coco because I'm also following I also followed the Bella Coco um, beginners video on how to make a square basically which I'll tag down below in the description um, I didn't understand that you had to go into the top of the chain for the previous round to make the last half double crochet to keep it a square so some of these are quite like janky looking and different sizes because I didn't also back then didn't know how to count my rows and count my stitches so I was kind of just guesstimating every time of when I should stop by holding them together and saying okay that looks good enough that looks long enough so some of them aren't the same size if you can see here it's like a tiny bit off um yeah so some of them aren't all the same size or same to the, not to the same squareness so um yeah but now, obviously, I know where to do the last um, half double crochet in too. So now they're all going to be perfectly uh, square slash rectangle. Um, all right, my next project that I'm working on, or current with, I should say, is what I talked about in my last episode, is my DPN socks. So that's just to mark where the start of the round is. So this is my DPN socks. I'm using the Patton's Dreamtime Baby Merino yarn. It's floor, uh, floor, four ply, 50 grams, 100% Australian Merino wool. Um, about this, I do know that you're supposed to use a yarn that has nylon in it. I just put that question to my Facebook groups. Um, does it have to have nylon in it? They said yes, to help with durability. So I probably won't wear these as much, maybe just around the house or maybe just in bed. Um, but yeah, that's basically what I'm, uh, going with. So here's my sock. Uh, they're on DPNs, as I said, and it's connected to the, the skein, but, um, that's how much I've got done, oh, got finished so far. I'm not going to say got done, it's not proper English. Um, I have completed, I think, 24 rows here. So this was a 20, 20 rounds, one by one rib in knitting um and then i'm just doing straight knit here in the round um for 59 rows and i'm following uh the crazy sock ladies uh youtube tutorial on how to make dpn socks her vanilla vanilla sock recipe i think or not recipe uh, pattern sorry um yeah so that's what i've got finished so far as i said 24 rounds i have to do 59 so oh and also if i forgot to mention the color for this yarn if you want to get it is 3879 or 3879 is the colorway it does it is is technically classed as mint on the website but that's the colorway if you're looking for it in the store um yeah so that's my dpn socks i really enjoy making these i had to start three times to um over three times over the first time was because First of all, this set that I bought of DPNs only comes with four, um, and DPNs are normally have a set of five. So I started the first time, and I thought I need to get another DPN 
somehow. So I looked up a set of five DPNs and there was none really that close to me. So then I thought, oh, use my, this set I have, that's just regular interchangeable knitting needles and just, sorry, there's a pop-up that keeps coming up and it keeps distracting me. Um, so a set of, yeah, so my set of um, knitting needles, I was going to use the 2.5, or 2.75 actually, uh, millimetre needle and just use that interchangeably as the fifth needle. But then I realised it's not a double-ended needle so I can't actually use it because then when you come to making the round you actually at the end of the um, needle and it's backwards then so you can't continue knitting. Um, if that makes any sense but yeah it probably doesn't make any sense but it makes sense to me. So then I, for the, so I took it off, recasted it on for that to use this set and so that was number two and then the third time I went down and got another set of these um and just used the extra set as my fifth one so now I have actually eight of these but I only use five because that's what the DPNs call for is a set of five or what the crazy sock ladies pattern calls for is a set of five so that's what I'm using all right um then the next thing I'm working on is this shawl i'll show you what i have so far so that's excuse the stitch marker but that's what i have so far as you can see it's not very big but um the tutorial is by ashley lillis on here on youtube and i'll tag her video in or the tutorial in the description if you want to follow along um so I, it's just straight up um, garter stitch so knitting on both sides of the work and I increase at increase every time on this side so where the stitch marker is on this side increase by one after the first stitch so the second stitch is an increase um, by making one and you increase on the same side every time so then you get this that um, sort of pattern this this bit here that's make makes it um increases as you go and this side you don't increase on so it stays straight here where my pinky is so i'm using the uh karen cakes yarn for this in the color way oh sorry you have another one behind me in the color fairy cake i think it is um that's the color way so in the video, Ashley uses um, chunky yarn, or quite chunky yarn compared to what I'm using. Um, so she made it to 72 stitches across the top, and then that was big enough for a whole shawl for her. Well, because I'm using, um, and I think she used 12 millimeter hook, uh, needles, I almost said hooks then, uh, 12 millimeter needles. So I'm using a five millimeter set of needles, so, and they're circular needles. So, um, I think I'm going to have way more stitches than she had across the top. So I'll probably end up using this whole entire cord, um, for my entire shawl. So, but that's all right because I wanted it to be a bit, uh, not as chunky. And also I had this yarn on hand, so that's what I'm going to use basically. So if it gets too, too long, I'll connect some of my interchangeable, um, cords together and knit it on that if the cord on my fixed set is not long enough I'll switch it over to those and like join three cords together and use those um and lastly last project I want to talk about is my chunky knit cardigan I'm working on so here's what I'll show you what I've finished so this is what it looks like at the moment I'm working on the back panel let me just unravel it because stocking it curls like crazy. Okay, there we go. So that's the back panel, what I've got so far. Or like that, actually. Yes, that's what I've got so far. Well, here's a better view of what it looks like. So I'm using 9mm needles. That's what the yarn calls for. And I'm following, I think it's pronounced Ikoshun. I spoke about their YouTube video in the last one of uh, where they made chunky knit cardigans in... A YouTube video or well, they made a couple and they showed us how to do it basically all the viewers how to do it so I'm following loosely basically their video and um, 
so as I said this is the back panel I'm doing um, eight rows of this teal color and then eight rows of purple teal purple teal purple until I finish the back panel um, this is I'll tell you the brand and everything so the brand is the Motivira monkey yarn so this one 100% acrylic 100 grams I'm using I've got eight skeins of it I'm using the colors uh, violet black and teal so the black will be the ribbing all the ribbing and then the violet and teal will alternate and be this basically a striped cardigan that's what I'm making um, it's a quite chunky yarn so it's yeah, as I said calls for nine millimeter nine millimeter needles and I have eight skeins plus three of, of black for the ribbing and I don't think that's going to be enough I've worked out how much I use I use about 50 grams of yarn for each uh, stripe section so basically like calculating that about 60 or yeah no about 70 centimeters for the back panel just because I want it to be over, oversized as well um, as you can see I've made it quite long so it's over, quite oversized so that's the back panel it's going to be quite oversized um, so I wanted extra room on each side of my shoulder. Um, so yeah, I don't have enough yarn for that, but I will, cause that's the yarn I have there. There is, there's some behind it as well. You can't see all of it, but yeah, that's, I have eight skeins of the, um, black and, or well, four skeins of teal, four skeins of violet. And I thought that would be enough, eight in total. Um, but yeah, I worked out the math and it's not, not enough. So I'll have to get more. Um. So yeah, also I wanted to talk about just in general, where is it? Right in front of me. So I also bought all these, they're DPNs, but they're the four millimeter ones. Oh, that's upside down. So, let me... so four millimeter DPNs. These are the Knit Pro Zing ones. So this is does come as a set of five, um, thankfully. So I didn't have to buy two sets again. Um, and I was going to, cast I what well, did cast this on and start a sock um in this colorway so obviously rainbow um that's a Karen cake skinny cakes um and it calls for a four millimeter hook or needle so I used the DPNs um four millimeter DPNs and I was casting on a sock basically um a large size sock so 72 stitches um based on the crazy sock ladies DPN tutorial vanilla socks um and I was working on it and I thought why am I doing two socks at once because I have to do obviously one of each two two of each sock so I've already got a sock um one on the knitting needles basically these DPNs this one I was talking about so I've already got a sock going so why do I want to um have another one and I'm not really and then when I want to do DPNs or when I work, want to work with DPNs, I have to choose between one or the other, the Karen Cakes Rainbow or the Mint Patons uh, Skinny Sock. So I thought, why work on two sets of socks when I can just work on one set and then have that as my next one I go to after I finish the mint ones. Um, and also I wasn't really, wasn't really invested in it that much. So I, th I thought, oh, I'll just, I had done two rows of the ribbing and I th thought that, like, I'm not really invested, so I'm just going to take it off. So I basically frogged it and rewound the yarn back around the cake. And yeah, so I'm not going to work on that until I finish the mint, these ones, the mint DPN socks. So I'll finish these two socks first. So I have to make another one after this, obviously, to make a pair. And um, then after that, I'll go on to the rainbow ones and work with those instead of doing both at once. So that's technically, if you haven't been counting, that's five um, whips I have going. Uh, that was gonna be six if I did the rainbow socks, but I changed my mind and as I just said, and uh, frogged it. So I have five whips going at once. And I just wanna make a note. Um, last video or last episode, I talked about how I was only going to have two whips, a crochet and a knit project going at once. Well, disregard that because I was working on my DPN socks and then my shawl and also then my, my crochet, my two crochet thing, uh, cardigans that are the granny square and patchwork cardigans. And I thought, 
I really, really, really want to cast on this, like, really badly. I wanted to cast on this um, chun chunky knit cardigan. So I thought, um, I'll just do that. I'll ch cast on the chunky knit cardigan, and then that's that's it. Um, so I disregard my previous comment in my last episode about only having two projects going at once. And I didn't mean any disrespect for people that have... Um, absolutely did not mean any disrespect for people that have more than two or five or however many you feel like uh, whips going at once. So if you were offended by that, I apologise. Um, but yeah, that's all my whips. And now on to the future plants. Now, excuse the pyjamas, as I usually say in my life or... As I'm going to say every episode probably because I spend 90% of my time in pajamas. Um, excuse me. So, future plans. My first one is this Bernat uh, Velvet Plus yarn. I bought, um, as you can see up here, I bought eight skeins of that in the two colours. So, four of indigo violet and four of vapour grey. So I plan on making probably a Tunisian crochet blanket um, with these two colours. Uh, I probably alternate like just stripes, so maybe like that, and then alternate stripes as I go up the blanket. Um, I plan on giving that to my mum. Um, uh, sorry about that, that's scratching my nose, but it's just the fibres off the yarn irritates my hay fever, um, or as Americans call it, allergies, I don't know if we are from watching this, but, um, yes, I'll just include that. Um, so it's 300 grams and it calls for, it's a hundred percent acrylic, I think. Let me just double check that. No, polyester, sorry, hundred percent polyester. And it calls for a nine millimeter hook. So I'll, it's super bulky number six. So I'll probably use, um, a, oh no, I do have a size 12 millimeter, um, Tunisian crochet hook I bought for that specifically because I had um, size I think two or maybe a bit smaller to ten so as, as high as I went was a ten millimeter so that or set I bought was as high as a ten millimeter so I needed to get another one um, so I bought that separately from the yarn store I'll leave a link for them they're an Australian store so if you're from Australia it's uh, pretty fast shipping so. And I had a good price on it, so I bought a um, 12 millimeter. I bought the hook. It was a Knit Pro hook and then a Knit Pro cord and stopper. That that were two separate ones. Um, and yeah, so that's that. Um, the next one I want to talk about is the Sweet Dreams cardigan, which I'm going to make. As you can see, it's inspired by Freddy Krueger from Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, the pattern is by Chrisella, I think it's Rojas. Um, they... I'll leave a link in the description. Sorry, I was just reading the pattern front. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for where you can find it on Ravelry. It's a free pattern, so go ahead and print that out if you want to make it. Um, I just need to purchase the yarn for it. Uh, obviously the green and the red and then the band will be like a brown colour to match his hat. Um, and yeah, so that's my uh, my next future plan to make is a crochet. It's crochet, by the way. Um, Sweet Dreams Cardigan. Um, and I have the pattern for it already, printed it out. And um, yeah, so I just need to buy the, buy the yarn, as I said. And uh, that's that. So my next uh, project I'm going to work on in the future or after I finish some of my whips um, is if your Stacy, um, my cousin's wife, Stacy, um, if you're watching this, turn off right now because I'm about to talk about something I'm making for you. But if you're not Stacy, um, continue watching, please. So I'm making, I'll put, I put a photo on the screen like right here of what I'm making but the yarn it's basically a um, hexagon B blanket so the hexagons I'm going to use these two colors I'm going to do one to make the hexagon I'm going to make one round of this and then the center of it this color so it'll be like the two-tone and then the border to around the hexagon to join 
um, each of the hex ones together will be white. And then to border the whole blanket when I finish, I'll use this um, cream. I only have one skein of this because I bought it for something else actually. And this is what I have left over. So it's the Spot Saver um, USA. Oh, it's upside down. USA Spot Saver Star. Spot Saver USA Style 100% Acrylic 200 Gram uh, Yarn in the colour Cream. So I'm going to use that to border it. And I forgot to mention, it's so this yarn is the Carnival 8 Ply Yarn. It's 100 grams of acrylic yarn and the colour is 150. And also this colour is colour 36, the number. Um... Yeah, so that's both Carnival and then also this is Carnival Soft, it's called. 8 ply as well, 100% acrylic. And the shade number is 4600 or 4600. Okay, for the white. Um, yeah, so they don't have colour names, they just have numbers, which is annoying because I love a good name on a yarn. Um, yeah, so that's all I'm really looking to in the future crochet wise I can tell you some of the other stuff I plan on making that I haven't got any yarn for or anything like that um just unlucky my iPad because I can bring it up on my iPad because I'm filming on my phone um what other plans I have or other projects I have in mind um uh, besides the ones I've mentioned in this video and also the ones I mentioned in the previous episode I have a crochet notions organizer I want to make, a spiderweb sweater, that's the popular one that everybody makes on, as that's a YouTube tutorial, the flame sweater by Made in the Moment, which I really want to make, it looks awesome, um, a six day style blanket, um, a hexagon cardigan I really want to make, I'm going to make it half black and white, half rainbow, so sort of like the Wednesday window sort of look, but I've seen a lot of people make that and I love that colorway, and I love black and white, and I love rainbow, so putting them two together is basically me in a cardigan. Um, oh, I'm going to make a pride flag cardigan, or try to at least, using, so this is the new, or the new crochet stitch um, dictionary. It's got 440 patterns by Neil is it Bross and Evelyn Burkart. Burkart. Um, so if I can quickly find it. Um, you watch, I won't be able to find it now. I should have done this before I started the video, but oh, here we go. Um, oh, this one here. I won't show you the pattern, but I'll show you the picture. I want to make the, it's called the pinwheel. So this pinwheel granny square, I'm going to um, use the basically the different um, pride flags and make each or make maybe a couple of each uh, pride flags. So the LGBTQIA different pride flags and um, use the colors of each flag or most of the flags as I can get. Um, and yeah, make a basically a cardigan with all the pride, all the common pride flags, I should say, because there's too many to make. One for all the different, um, different labels, terms, whatever you want to call them. Um, yeah. And yeah, at the bottom of my list is finish the bucket hat, so that I started. And a sunburst, the popular, I'll leave the um, link in the description the for the, all these tutorials, if they have video tutorials. Um, the sunburst uh, granny square, I want to make a cardigan out of those, uh, those as well, because they look pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that's all my future plans. Okay, now a little bit about me, or not really about me, but um, just stuff I want to talk about. So, I haven't seen any, or I started watching Evil Dead Rise with my mum. Um, we haven't finished it, I'm about 40 minutes in, so I'll let you know what I think of it when I finish it. Uh, but so far, so good. I haven't seen or watched, started any new TV shows, so I have nothing to talk on that topic. But um, audiobooks, I am currently listening to... Uh, last episode I hadn't started, but I've already started now, and I'm almost, I'm about 30 minutes left of it. The Slob by Aaron Beauregard. Um, gross book. Yeah, that's all I have to say on that. Gross. But I like it. So yeah. Um, on my wish list on Audible is, is where I consume my audiobooks. Um, I have 
a few that I want to mention. So I don't know if they're any good. I'm not saying that they're good. I'm just saying I want to read them or listen to them. It is Haunted by Chuck Palahniuk. I think it is. Uh, the Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. Um, Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I'm reading off my iPad here, so I'm looking down. Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. Um, Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. Uh, Black Mouth by Ronald Malfi. And that's about it for the stuff I want. Oh, and a few Darcy Coates books um, that I want to listen to. But, yeah, that's all for um, books. I haven't read any physical books. I don't actually read physical books because I just don't have the time because I'm so busy knitting and crocheting. So I just listen to audiobooks while I knit and crochet and that's, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Now, a few things I just want to talk about in general is, um, first of all, the knitting. Um, the type of knitting I do is continental and so it's continental or English. I know there's probably other types, but that's the main two, I guess. Um, I knit continental um, and not not because I want to be faster. I, I first time I tried knitting, I tried English knitting, and the having to like when you're knitting, stop and throw the yarn between the hook, the needles, and then keep knitting every time you go between each stitch, uh, or every time you knit a stitch, you have to stop and pick up the yarn and put it between the needles. Um, I felt that was too not repetitive, but like I felt like I was stopping too much. And I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to get that sort of flow motion because I felt like having to throw the yarn between the two needles was making me having to s stop too much. So that's why I tried continental knitting when I came back to it in um, middle of September this year. I tried continental and that's much closer to, they say it's a flick, but I find it's more of a scoop um, when you're picking up the yarn or yarning over the needle um, to make the stitch obviously each stitch I find it's more closer to crochet because that's what I started with or generally started with uh, what I'm good at because um, I consider myself maybe like an advanced or intermediate crocheter uh, not advanced crochet sorry advanced beginner or intermediate crochet um, yeah that's what I'd say I mean probably definitely intermediate because um, I was doing advanced beginner stuff when I was actually just a beginner so not to brag not to brag, just saying. Um, yeah, so that's my thoughts on English versus Continental. They're both great. Um, I don't do Continental to knit faster. I just do it because it's, it was easier for me to learn and grasp and practice. Um, so, yeah, I spoke about the bucket hat that I sc scrapped the idea of. Not completely scrapped. I will work on it eventually. But um, as for now, it's scrapped. And also, if you can see up there those three balls or three skeins i should say um they were for a hanging plant crocheted hanging plant and i felt like i was having to force myself to work on it because i wasn't really invested in the project itself and i didn't really care about having the hanging plant in the end so i thought i'll just put it on hold save what i've done with a stitch marker and come back to it when i'm actually invested in doing it so that's my thoughts on that. So I only work on, or you don't have to, but I'm just saying, I only work on projects. I'm actually, I actually care about the journey and also the finished project. Project. Um, another thing I want to point out is just disregard my two project rule. A again, the statement I made last episode about the two projects of one knit, one crochet, and that's all I'm working on. I have five now. Um, so yeah, that's gone out the window. Um, yeah, so I didn't mean any disrespect about saying if you work on more than two projects you're not like something wrong with that work as work on as many as you can just don't, don't overwhelm yourself with um too too many projects so if you can't work on more than five don't do more than five if you can't work on more than 20 at once don't do more than 20 at once it's up to you and just don't overwhelm yourself with how many you're comfortable with um another question i want to pose to you guys um by the way thank you for last time i checked was 28 subscribers Thank you so much for 28 subscribers. I know in the grand scheme of things, um, compared to some other YouTube channels, 28 doesn't seem like much, but it does mean a lot to me that 28 people have subscribed. And I'll mention now, don't forget to subscribe and comment. Um, comment what you're working on or what project you're working on, whether it's knit, crochet or anything 
else, even if it's uh, drawing. I am interested in drawing and painting, so, or I used to draw and paint. I'm a bit burnt out with that, that's why I'm not doing it at the moment. But um, if you are drawing or knitting, crocheting, weaving, spinning, uh, cross stitching, embroidering, I think it's, uh, that's the proper title for it. Um, yeah, let me know what you're working on in the comments below, please. Um, now I just want to pose the question to you about a 12 hour knitting slash crochet challenge. If you're interested in watching, if you guys are interested in watching that, um, please comment as well below if you're interested in that and I'll film a video of me crocheting and knitting for 12 hours in it. Not straight, because that's just impractical, but I would put on a timer and show you the timer. So you, every time I knit and crochet, I would have the timer on, and then you can see in the end of the 12 hours, when I reach the 12-hour point, how much I've done of each, or how much I've done of what I've worked on in that 12-hour period. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in watching that, please let me know um, in the comments, and I will film that video for you guys. Um, another thing I want to talk about is Friends. Or just the topic of friends, not the TV show. But um, if you guys like this sort of content, like the fiber arts, uh, crocheting, knitting, as I said, anything to do with yarn, um, please consider subscribing because I consider you guys like friends um, that I'm talking to. I'm not talking to my camera or just talking, or my iPhone actually is what I'm filming on. I'm not talking to my iPhone, I'm just, I'm not talking to myself, I'm just talking to my friends that care about fiber arts whether no matter what uh area of fiber arts you do um yeah so I, I consider you guys my friends so please leave any questions um any comments in that you guys leave i would definitely answer or respond to or at least like um yeah because i honestly don't have many friends in real life that knit or crochet I have, as I said in the beginning uh, three of this video, I have three friends in real life that do any sort of fiber art stuff, so I would love some more. Um, I do have one online friend that I communicate with. Um, I don't know if they want to be named, so I just won't, I won't name them, but um, yeah, I do have one online friend that I talk to about fiber arts, and we go back and forth about what we're working on, that sort of stuff, and what projects we're doing, and anything challenging about that. Um, but yeah, I would love some more friends. So I'll leave my Instagram handle in the, uh, all right, back, to, sorry about that, um, about the jump in there. Um, my phone had full storage, so I had to delete some stuff. Um, as I was saying, uh, I will leave my Instagram handle in the description of this video. So feel free to add me or follow me on there and I'll follow you back and, um, yeah, we can discuss or chat about, um, five arts and our love for yarn and knitting and crocheting and all that sort of crafty stuff. Um, one other thing I have to say is the correction to my um, pronouns of alt knots. In the previous episode, I called them a her. Um, I did not know that they go by they, them pronouns. Um, I didn't realise that till maybe last week or after I filmed their episode, last episode, because I was on their... Um, uh, Instagram profile watching their stories and I'm a big believer in pronouns so I apologize for calling them a her and it won't happen again so uh, alt knots goes by or Kayla goes by they them pronouns and as I said I love their videos and their channel and everything they produce I look forward to uh, all their um, videos I literally I generally um I'm excited about their new videos that they post and I look forward to every single video they post. So I apologize for that if they magically, rarely happen to be watching. Um, I apologize. Um, and yeah, that's all from me. Uh, I've shown you everything I need to show you. Um, please comment what you're working on, as I said before. And um, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more um fiber arts related videos and crochet and knitting stuff from me um yeah if you want to see more stuff from me uh if you want me to keep going with this podcast leave a like on this video if you can or if you want to i won't tell you what to do but it would help the channel and the videos a lot if you left a like and a comment and subscribed if you wanted to um so yeah i'm not going to beg for subscribers but if you want to i would greatly appreciate you subscribing um yeah, so that's, 
that's all my plans. Um, I think. Oh, um, one thing I wanted to mention was I did buy this yarn. It's the Landscapes Lime Brain yarn in this colorway or that colorway. It's the color Blue Lagoon. And I plan on making a cow with that because I really love that. I saw that yarn. I just had to have it. So I bought one skein of that to make a cow with. Um, that should have been the future plan section, but oh well. Um, it is what it is. So that's all the stuff I have to show you guys. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for the next episode, which will probably be out in um, another two weeks if I have enough uh, things, things finished. And if not, I'll have another video out in a month. Um, so yeah, it's either two weeks or a month, uh, depending on how much I can get finished in that time um, of my current whips. So we'll see. But um, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, bye, guys. Thank you.